Alright, welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls to the broadcast here and we got Summit 7 coverage coming at you, the qualifiers of course of the European region. And we got two teams now, Mal Sports versus Ninjas in Pajamas here, best of three. This is an elimination match. You lose this, you are done here in these qualifiers. You win this, you stay alive simply in this group stages GSL format. So looking forward to seeing what happens here. I am Bricky CPK. I'm going to be joined by my co-caster Tsunami today. Tsunami, how's it going? I mean, I'm doing good, but I can't, I can't speak for how NIP might be doing right now. You Shots fired. Maybe... <laughs> I mean, even if they did win... Which, for those of you who are not aware, uh, roughly 15 minutes ago, NIP just exited out of a grueling 70-minute match in which they had a pretty substantial lead yeah. in the Mr. Cat EU Invitational and uh, yeah, ended up losing it against Pro Dota. And now, mere minutes after being 2 0 by Pro Dota, they have to come into this series. So, yeah, I'm doing good, but if I were <laughs> NIP... I, I can't imagine, like, the mental state that they must be in. With, with all these events going on, man, you have to have short-term memory. Like, that, that that's just simply what it comes down to, yes. And I know that's easier to say than, than do, but, again, if you're NIP, it's done. Hell, in that event, you know, looking at it real quickly, that was the winner's final, so they are still in it, actually. They're down in the loser's bracket, but... It's, you know, again, forget about it. It happened, whatever. Let's move on to our next event because this is another pretty crucial one at that. This is an elimination match Ten now in what is the Summit 7 qualifiers, a very prestigious event in itself. So you kind of, you know, Five refresh here. And they're going up against a solid team in Mouse Sports. But, you know, to be fair, Mouse Sports on the other side, it's not like they've been on a hot Zero streak time. themselves. So both of these teams, you could argue, are in a, a fair amount of a cold streak here as of late. So we'll see which of the teams kind of break out of that, at least for the time being here in this series, but uh, hopefully, and I'm sure it will be entertaining to say the least. Uh, we got the IO first pick for Mouse Sports with all that said, Magnus Rubik coming out for NIP. That's a little bit different draft from NIP than what they've been going for in that aforementioned series. And they're actually going to be using Mickey this time because I know in that previous series, we mentioned that they were uh, having Boxy as their mid player. Yes. And so, I guess, in an elimination match, maybe sticking to their main roster. <laughs> well, so, again, it's, it's really interesting with NIP as of late. I, again, I, I mentioned this yesterday or whenever we cast them recently. And Sania officially is part of the team. Cinderin, of course, dropping out and Sania taking over his spot. Mickey actually has been, quote-unquote, standing in for them in place of Koikfa, but he's been doing that for basically since Kiev in, in what's been now at 10 matches, I want to say, in total that they've played. So... You know, it feels like that they're kind of trying out, if anything. And that, that's what I would believe is happening. And, you know, Mickey, obviously, a great potentially up-and-coming mid player, as I've always stressed. Boxy, too, honestly, is one that I know is involved heavily in the Dota 2 scene now. And he does have the Han background, and I know is definitely potentially going to be a great player himself. So, again, just speculation, but I believe that's what's going on. But it seems like Mickey is more of their go-to mid right now and the one that they're definitely sticking with, at least for the time being. So, but nothing official yet, but, yeah, we'll see. How that ultimately uh, turns out. But Ember Spirit is, of course, going to be the second pick, though, for Mouse Sports on the other side. And Mouse, they, they got their full roster. They've been this roster for a very long time, in fact. So they're not dealing with that. Yeah, and you're going to need a well-oiled roster, a very mm, a roster that's familiar with each other if you're going to run an IO first pick. That's a hero that I have not been seeing first pick by very many teams in like any region to be honest and occasionally it will get banned out by some teams that either just hate having to play against it or know that they've probably run it in scrims against various teams but yeah mouse sports going straight to it and not really plucking up a combo and that's one of the advantages that io has gotten in these more recent patches is that you don't need to just snatch up an instant combo with your first two picks io is a rather there are enough flexible meta carries in the current pool right now that you don't need to have one go-to combo you can kind of wait see what the enemy draft is see what they're banning out see what they don't want to have to deal with and then you can choose accordingly and nip they seem to not want to have to go against anyone that you know excels with the pickoff so they ban out the bat rider they ban out the legion commander and those are two heroes that really set up for relocate gangs you start a duel 
and immediately you're going to lose the duel because three heroes are going to converge on your location. Yeah. Same thing with Batrider. You just lasso someone, and then all of a sudden, what is just a Batrider turns into Batrider plus two on your you know cores and stuff like that. Absolutely, and Isles kind of had an interesting phase as far as his uh, his interest from teams post 7.0. Because I remember when 7.0 came out, you know that was one of the things with the new bounty bounty rune system. That is, people thought you know Wisp was going to really benefit from that. You know the idea that he has a bot on, he essentially is going to get a free two charge bottle at least every single couple of minutes. But we, we never really saw that take off. I mean, he's always kind of been a niche pick and every now and then, but uh, never really took off because of that new system. Um, do you think that's that was maybe oversold in the beginning and that's why, or is that still potentially something that Wisp is actually better than people give him credit for? It's mainly because, yes, Wisp did benefit from it, but so did every single hero in the pool and so the edge that wisp had is yeah i mean there will be more rune dominance but with runes being all over the place do you really need that kind of dominance because your carries don't need that constant sustain in fact when we've been seeing io post 7.0 it's not the like the holding hands io that we saw in years past it was kind of like io will you know maybe help out the mid lane for a little bit then go jungle for a little bit then you know mid game stick around with the off laner help get pick offs with the tether move speed and then late game io will link back up with the carry and be like you remember the good old times when we, i used to just overcharge you permanently well let's bring it back and so io has kind of transitioned from being that permanent babysitter to being a more flexible hero and that may be product of the rune changes but not something enough to really solidify io in that medic role well we got many picks to, to follow now we got the slaughter into dark seer lena coming out so mickey gonna get his hands on lena most likely he has been playing that a fair amount and of course good at that we'll be matched up against the ember spirit you figure uh, in this case right here but yeah mouse board's still so waiting to see i mean ember spirit and io is obviously a solid combo in itself but they don't really have that, you know, that catch. You mentioned the LC and the Batrider bands, but, you know, things like their one position, perhaps an Ursa comes to mind right off the bat, or even that tiny route I, I always like to bring up whenever I see the Wisp. That's eh, going to be a Slark. Okay, so okay, not necessarily as IO Synergy-like. Yeah, but. not at all, really. In fact, I, Slark is kind of difficult because Slark has such ridiculously high move speed that IO has a tough time keeping up, and... Really, Slark doesn't benefit too much from the kind of survivability that an IO provides to your carries. Like, Slark is very mobile. He doesn't really need to relocate saves because most of the time he just can just shadow dance out and he can dark pack out of other things. And then whenever you're going aggressive, Slark causing a pounce means that most of the time you'll be breaking a tether. So, yeah, I'm surprised that they go for this Slark because not really the kind of carry that needs an IO, let alone benefits from Anayo, so I would imagine that Mouseports are going to go for some kind of off laner that, I mean, like, Io's definitely going to have to support the Slark, and most likely Darkseer will be jungling, but then do you really want to run a tri lane unless if Io is, like, jungling, which we have seen some Iron Talon Io's, and that's a potential, but the problem is that Slarder is really good at invading jungles, and Io can't deal with that amount of physical damage because Io has no armor. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to think, you know, maybe next time, more of their four-position player, does he really have a lot of history playing IO? So I was going to search that real quickly. But they go Bane, actually, with their final pick. So, again, I can still see that kind of going either way, though. And then, wow, a snap pick anti-mage to finish it off. That's actually kind of interesting, considering they did that into the Bane. Bane's pretty good with that lockdown. Cranston needs yeah, a channel. these but... picks are like, – I, I would have un understood a snap pick anti-mage for most supports, but – like, against Slark, Anti-Mage is always at the back of most drafters' minds as a carry pick because you just don't really care about what 90% of Slark's intimidation factor is. You just blink out a pounce, and everything else, Slark just isn't going to be very useful at catching an Anti-Mage in split-pushing positions. But Bane can set up, and then once Bane gets a Nightmare, then you bring in the IO. But the problem is that, I guess, once you bring in the IO, Anti-Mage can just blink out, unless if Bane's has, Bane has Fiend's Grip. Yeah. So... I mean, neither of these drafts are like uh, NIP, uh, like and with Magnus plus Anti Mage, that's automatically a very, very good combo. Whereas Mouse Sports, 
I don't really know. They pick all these combo heroes, like Bane is a combo hero, quote, but doesn't really have much to work with aside from relocate into Fiend's Grip. And then Io is also a combo hero, but also doesn't really have much to work with in terms of his carry potential. So, yeah, I kind of prefer NIP's draft here. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. The, the Bane pick, the more I'm looking at it and as you're getting at it, it seems off. Like, the, what is their follow-up to a Nightmare? What's their follow-up to him locking some? I mean, obviously, just raw damage is, of course, good to have, but... Yeah, I mean, even with that Bane pick, their lockdown also does feel a little lacking. And so that Anti-Mage pick, now that you're really looking over the whole lineup, actually does make a lot of sense. Uh, Going to be played in the hands of Era here, I am sure. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm leaning much more towards NIP's lineup as far as just overall having a nice theme and yeah. uh, and looking the stronger. It seems that, you know, even the, the Darkseer follow-up with this Vacuum Wall combo, I mean, in itself it's strong, but they don't really have that that follow-up to it, you know? He's going to vacuum people in, then what? Ember Spirit, I guess, you know, Fire Remnants in, but... And even once you do go in, then you have to be concerned about Blink Crush following up on your vacuum or Blink RP following up on your vacuum. Vacuum. So there's very, like, you'll ideally get an early... I don't even know what you build on Dark Darkseer this game because you're going to need survivability. And IP are very, very bursty with this Lena, with the Sardar. There is a lot of just, like, blink in and destroy a target power. And that's what Slark hates having to go up against. And so uh, you need to keep your Slark alive, but at the same time, your initiation is kind of lacking on mouse sports if you don't get any Blink Daggers. And I don't know how much farm maybe next time going to be able to get on this hero. I don't know if, like, well, no one's built items on out of Bane and Io because I want to see if Spartan goes for an Iron Talon because then maybe next time can maybe find a little bit more farm if he's supporting the Slark, but... If they're running a tri-lane, like a full-on tri-lane, then this Bane's going to be very, very poor. And even the setup potential on an anti-mage is not going to come to fruition, and Bane's just going to be food for an anti-mage. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to wait for them to reconnect here, just <clears throat> doing the quick old restart of the game, I'm sure, and then should be good to go here very shortly. What is our first of two best of threes coming at you today? Obviously, a little bit later of a start because of that, uh, that series that NIP was just previously playing in, that epic game number two. And... Uh, I saw, you know, tweet was kind of my Twitter feed was kind of blowing up after that game finished, and for good reason. It was quite the epic finish. We happened to jump into it just to check to see what our status was going to be, and you know, an epic Roshan fire where just buybacks galore on either side, and you know, in the end, Pro Dota again coming out on top though. So NIP though having that short term memory or has to at least, and you know, forget about it and move on to this one now. But um, our next matchup, with that said, is uh, set to be. What is it? Vega Squadron versus Alliance. That's right. That's from Group B over there. That will be a winner's bracket matchup, actually. So that's going to be our later match and one also to definitely look forward to later on today. So, But, yeah, Insania, he gets this comfortable Rubik pick. He plays this often. Yeah, it's uh, all of NIP seem like pretty comfort picks in general. Hani is definitely an operator on Slardar. Mickey, I don't know if I've seen too much of his Lena, but... <laughs> I know how good <laughs> I know how good of his mid is in general and the mid matchup is kind of you know it's proven to be more and more Lena flavored as time progresses Ember Spirit just is has a hard time recovering from the initial levels if the Lena goes super aggressive unless if Ember Spirit has someone to roam in on the mid lane like Ogre Magi or other popular even though Ogre's not that popular anymore but other roamers on the mid lane like Earth Spirit but this game, I mean, Bane is the best option, but Bane is also not really that great. He's one of the tankier supports and one of the higher damage dealing supports, but it's very slow. And again, there's nothing you can really set up with a nightmare. Yeah. Apparently. Dude, these, these Europe teams have been slugging it out today. Even like, even Alliance was playing uh, in that, I think it was, I think it was Epicenter. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're playing like that, right but... now against Navi, yeah. Yeah, Europe is, they, they are enjoying, there was a little bit of downtime after Kiev when like no Dota was going on, <laughs> but now it's just nope. like, it's straight into the veins. It's just like, yeah, get into playing and figure out your rosters, like you just have to do it so quickly it feels like it. <laughs> so this roster shuffle phase has been very like rushed, I feel like, uh, even compared to, to, to previous ones to an extent. So, but uh, we definitely have been seeing some interesting changes which uh, I plan to talk about on my podcast that I release every Friday called The Dot Pro Show. Just saying. Oh, uh, wh where, where is that? Where is that again? Uh, you know, it's the cycle of defense of the patients.com. You can check it out there if you oh, really want okay. to. But uh, anyways, 
we are ready to resume here in our game now finally. So officially kicking it off in game number one now. Of this yeah, no Iron Talon yet from Spartan. Just getting a ward out right now. He still hasn't bought anything, but that does not really tell me much because it's possible that Spartan might just go for a straight bottle and just babysit Thug Mid, which is what I was saying, that Ember Spirit kind of needs a babysitter early on. And Io is, you know, useful, but not going to really be able to bother the Lina and just be able to secure Ember's farm is your best option. Mm -hmm. Any contestant going on? You see Magnus scouting out. Being played by Trixie right here, but doesn't seem like uh, going to be moving out just yet. Still plenty of time, though, to make a move if they would like. So a little bit of rotations coming out. What was that about Slark? He's not back towards the top. Dark Seer is just sitting up here in his own jungle. He does have the Iron Talon and a couple of Tangos he got shared with him. 30 huh. seconds to battle. So is Dark Seer going to end up at the top lane, actually? Uh, are they just going to straight up abandon bot? Because, I mean, Dark Seer does fine against Rubik Anti Mage. It's a little bit intimidating, but. I don't think you need to go straight into the jungle, unless if he's expecting like heavy, heavy Slardar rotations, but I imagine that Slardar will be spending a lot of time either mid or in the off lane bothering Slark, because as it is against a Magnus, Slark has a tough time, but if you slap a Slardar on top of that, he has an even tougher time getting farmed. So yeah, I'll be keeping my eyes on Hani. He has boots straight out the base on the Slardar, so I imagine he's going to be moving around a lot, go figure. Huh, yeah, really interesting for Mouse here to, to decide this and essentially give up that farm to the anti-mage. But again, Dark's here, you know, by himself, it might have been fairly difficult to prevent that, if anything. So might as well get him his own efficient farm. And it's going to be interesting to see how NIP also reacts to this now. Once they notice, it's like, wait, where, where's the Iron Shells? Where's Dark's here? He's not here, so. Yeah, yeah and Hani immediately migrates to the secondary jungle, which is where you'd assume a Dark Seer would be. And so this works out for Mouse Voice, as Dark Seer will almost certainly be able to pick up level two before Slardar discovers where he is. And once you have Surge, you're pretty safe. So, yeah, I can I can understand why Mouse Sports is opting for this. Now, if he jumps back after level two, or if he just sticks in the jungle, that will be an interesting decision. Yeah. Top lane, Magnus, he's a pretty aggressive position right here. <laughs> you see Bane with that brain. Bane's a very good harassing support, you know, between his auto attacks and then his brain sap. It's some good damage coming out. Obviously, the poor man's shield will mitigate plenty, but I feel like Trixie will have to be a little careful here as far as over committing that uh, combo of heroes. So keep an eye on that top lane the best we can to see potentially kills could be happening. But speaking of potential kills, middle lane, honey, has rotated to the middle again and maybe waiting for some kind of setup. Oh, wow. Here, and they're just going to burn Shrine. Wow, Skylark yeah. needed it during his jungling, which he's hit level three, so he's on a good pace. But I guess it's not that important for Thug to get the Shrine. You've got an IO with a bottle mid. Took some harass from the Lina, but that's okay because you can just regenerate both your heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of those, clearly they've uh, they've practiced this uh, plenty of times before, whether it's scrims or actually in games itself and tournament matches, and uh, it seems very fluid right now, the idea of using that shrine so early on, and now Skylark makes his way back to the bottom lane. As you mentioned, he is level 3, and he's going to now do the jungle off to the side over here as it's just past 2 minutes, picks up the banner, and I mean, the timing was, like, perfect. So, um, yeah, clearly they got that down, but however... Insania, he's going to be like, oh, here you are, but he's level yeah, 1. Yeah, but he's, he's the one who needs to be afraid. Skylark could burn Surge if he wants to, force Insania to use tele Oh, never mind. Insania's still level 1, so he didn't even have Telekinesis. Yeah. But Skylark's more interested in just securing his own farm. I Like, Darkseer jungle paths used to be an art, as top lane Hani is just kind of migrating over there. Yeah, Dark Darkseer it used to be so systematic, and, like, it was... Uh, maybe a relic of an older age when you you were just like able to so strategically hit camp after camp after camp meanwhile mid lane Mickey. Yeah, Mickey's in some trouble right here. Poor coming in from Slaughter, but now actually Thug and Spar are the ones that perhaps need to be a little bit careful and they will back it off. But yeah, probably providing some harassment to lean in nonetheless and forcing out some region and a teleport. Nothing bad with that. Yeah, Hani hasn't been able to find very much. He's now having to sap level 2 from Lina because if you don't have Surge this late, which Crush... Oh my god, Thug's in trouble. He's going to die right here. First Blood? Oh, the Searing Chain's coming out. The final object's not enough, and that overcharge yeah. of Io more overcharge than enough Overcharge plus him. bottle. Yeah, definitely. Because his Flame Guard was down. They knew it because that was what they were using aggressively on to Mike. But now Radiant gets to Shrine up, but Dire has to go all the way back to their base Shrines. 
It's kind of amusing seeing a creep wave mid with catapults. It, like, no one's there. <laughs> <laughs> but they happen to fall back at the same time. Lena coming back, though. So going to be able to do just fine there. Skylark, he could be in some trouble now. The roam in from Hani. You got Andy Mage kind of pushing up farm and not make, giving any Ooh. information away. They're going to go in. He is out of mana currently, so can't search just yet. Oh, but here we go. Spartan comes in an IO, and all of a sudden the Radiant side's the one running away as that level 3 Ion Shell is something to fear, no doubt. God, the, the regen there coming out from the IO is just huge. Yeah, it was a little bit of leftover regen from the fountain itself. Spartan went all the way, way back into the fountain, and... Yeah, that's definitely a very, very fortuitous timing for Spartan to come in because without that, Skylark would have been dead to rights. No mana for the Surge, Solring was on cooldown, but this is the advantage of sending the Darkseer straight into the jungle off the bat. You have such a high level Ion Shell that even Anti-Mage with Spell Shield can't really sustain much of it. And I don't think that Anti-Mage will be going for like a Vanguard straight off the bat just to get the regen, but he has this Ring of Health and... He's definitely, it's not going to be some burning Midas stuff. He's going to need to get this Battle Fury. And once he gets in power up and running with Trixie, which Trixie is also getting a fair amount done in his off lane, then Anti Mage is going to have an easier time. But right now, this is Skylark's lane. Could you argue, actually, talking about, you know, we saw an Anti Mage game recently, I made the point. The, this is just one of the few, if not only heroes, that's even relevant that we see Battle Fury on still. It's like, you know, he's keeping the item alive essentially by himself. He has but an do you need it with Empower? Exactly. Yeah. Is that necessary? It's a, it's a school of thought. It just depends on what the player wants. If he's going for Battle Fury, I imagine that Era wants to be left alone a lot of the time. So in addition to Cleave, Battle Fury is just like, it's so satisfying for the amount of regen that it gives. It's just the perseverance is like, it allows you to feel so much more confident tanking waves, going into the jungle and you can blink freely without having to worry about your mana going down. Whereas if you don't have an item like that, you will run out of mana if you just have treads. Yeah. So the way NIP are going to be building this anti-mage is in a way that they're like, okay, we are going to four man, anti-mage, you do anti-mage things. If Magnus and I link up, then yeah, I'll give you empower, but don't bank on it. You got Ember Spear rotating somewhere up here. Maybe just gonna jungle a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it. And a takeover, been in the jungles. As Slaughter finds himself at the top lane once again. Magnus, level 3 Shockwave. A lot of magical burst coming out. Maybe if they find this Bane right here, if waiting for that 6-minute battery, we're going to pick it up. But at what cost for him? In comes the Crush, and now maybe next time. Going to be dead this time around. There's still no first blood bounty just yet, remember. This is probably going to be it at this point. He's going to Nightmare himself, try to destroy damage, but it's just not going to happen. Thug's like, I kind of want to help you, but I don't, because I'm low on life. Here comes Iota to try to change that Fade Bolt coming out, though. And that will scare them off in the end. As, oh, they're Midbar. trying to catch them. The pounce coming in. Actually, we'll get the leash on Insania right there. The Shadow Dance pop for this. They're committing quite deep. No shrine to use, and that will be a successful kill onto the Rubik. So it ends up being a one for one. Both supports going down. Yeah, I guess Bane accepted his fate. It was very strange that he turned around at the last second because Magnus was all out of mana, and he doesn't have anything like an Orb of Venom or something. And based just off of move speed, Bane has like almost the same move speed as Magnus, but. I thought that if he nightmared the Slardar and then ran away from the Magnus, he may have been able to survive. But instead, Bane was just like, oh, I could probably set up for the rest of my team to come in and try to go for a kill. And yeah, they end up getting up on the Rubik, so one for one. But still, first blood goes the way of NIP. Top lane, rotation's coming in. Trixie could be in some trouble. Bane so on level three. But still, that Brain Sap 2 has that nightmare set up again. But like we talked about, you know, what is that really setting up for necessarily? So... In this situation, Skewer is one of the few spells that can't break out of Pounce Leash. And so, I mean, most of the time, Slark is able to, oh, as we may see here. Dude, oh, God. Oh, what the? <laughs> that was awkward. I, I don't know what the end of it was. So, it was skewered before the Pounce hit. Like, it, was, it was a pathing, I would assume. I mean, like, he didn't go for, like, a, he did, wasn't in melee. The problem was that he wanted to right-click the Magnus to, like, get the angle. But the problem is if you complete the right-click, then you're going to go to sleep. And so he wanted to get close. Oh, spikes. No, never mind. I ignore ignore my justification. It was lag. <laughs> of course. Good old lag here. No, it's, it's and I, you know, in cases like that, I mean, I, I can believe it. Yeah, it seemed, it seemed that something just seemed off. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the risk of running Bane whenever, you know, you don't have an easy spell to pop off the nightmare to prevent your right clicks from drawing it, but Thug. oh, he's jungle. in trouble right here. Ember shrine is, or not shrine coming in, but Io's coming in. Basically, is a shrine, but no mana to be used right here. He does have uh, 
His bottle is going to link on up. The crush, the one, two. Spartan falling down. The LSA is going to miss, but the Lakuta play to take out the Ember Spirit right there. And they also got the kill on a Spartan as well. Mickey ends up with that double tap there in the end. And he's going to get a nice little regen room to bottle up on top of that. So, Lena, you know, his start's been, been so so, but that's definitely going to start boosting him quite a bit here now. 3,000 net worth. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not as substantial as like a solo Ember kill because keep in mind that Io and Ember have basically been splitting experiences. Io is level 4, Ember Spirit is level 5, and Mikkei, on the other hand, is about to hit level 7. So that's another disadvantage of running a dual mid setup like this. But if Thug's not doing too bad, that kill kind of sucks, but he's he, he got past the toughest part of this lane. You know, I want to stress on this too, and curious about your thoughts oh, on this. Actually, he is going aggressive. He does have the IO coming, so that's why he's looking to play so aggressive. He knows Mickey doesn't have a Lakuna play, not really much made it to be had, and the orb's going to eventually take him out in the end. Thug, though, ooh, that's another pause coming out. Apparently, they are uh, they are lagging, as that would be my only guess. Mm -hmm. As to why they're pausing here, but Thug, I don't. I mean, it's just a slaughter level three, so yeah, I don't think he's getting this now. Yeah, and. Poor man's shield, Iron Talon, this Ember Spirit has five armor and overcharge, he's going to be fine. But um, my thoughts, yeah, what yeah, did you well, want my thoughts? Yeah, I want your thoughts here. Um, <laughs> what was it about? Oh yeah, Lena, Lena the uh, the next item that she's choosing to get here. Again, she's going to use, I, I feel like we've still been seeing quite a bit of these Bloodstones, even with the talent changes ASAP though. And I don't know, it may, maybe it's just coincidence or whatever, but it does seem like a lot of the times, you know, the earlier death cell that happened on set hero that gets that bloodstone it just it takes so much away and it, it's almost like you're, you're losing so much of that net worth that you had earlier on in the game where instead you know going the yields i mean that item's always going to guarantee be there it's going to help and then, then you can progress into the bloodstone to then ideally help you know stay alive in certain situations if anything so personally i feel like i'm liking the idea of the yields uh, being picked up first yeah, ever since the level 10 talent chains, I've never been a fan of Bloodstone like continuing to be the go-to item. And China kind of flipped it. They were going Shadow Blade occasionally first on Lina, which is also, you know, interesting. But Yules is a classic. And this game, it's incredibly effective because it's going to be able to purge off Ember's Flame Shield, Flame Guard. And so chances are that given the start that Lina had, I wouldn't have been surprised if Mike would have gone for Bloodstone given a different matchup. But against an Ember specifically, the F Yules just has too much value. And a lot of the heroes, like Slark, is going to lose a lot of damage if Lina defensively Yules is. You can purge off the Surge on the enemies. You can break the Channel of Bane without having to spend LSA. So Yules just has like so much utility this game. So I'm glad that Mike is going for it. Well, Era bottom lane. He's got the headdress now. He's going to be finishing power dress. So he's kind of all over the place. A lot of early buildup. He's not necessarily rushing into a battle fury, but he could be in some trouble right here. Root coming out. Port's coming in from Rubik. He's going to be able to blink away, of course. Darkseer, though, in the back lines. Vacuums in. No wall combo just yet, though. He's holding on to it. Fire Reminis to follow Era, though. Doing a good job at juking and driving. The wall comes Ooh. out, but it's just too late. And Sania may fall, but really not RP. a big deal, but a big RP in return. And on top of that, with that shockwave, but not enough damage. Just as somebody, somehow, nobody's dead. Finally, the mana point goes off. Skylark will fall, and they get the kill to Io. And now Thug going to take that shockwave damage. And Era, who was the one that was in the bad spot initially, he comes up to clean up onto the Ember Spirit. And now Shadow Dance activated by Sark. Is he still out of here? Yeah, they're still in trouble. Dragon Slave connects, a Fade Bullet, everything used. Mickey Laguna Blade just to absolutely guarantee. What a turn for ninjas in pajamas there. Anti Mage was so close to death. That wall of replica, if it had connected on Era, he would have been dead for sure because the mana break and Anti Mage Illusion does so much damage. But he just gets out by the skin of his teeth. The first TP is from Rubik, which is not the ideal TP, but they didn't know it was going to be a three hero rotation. They thought it was just going to be like, you know. Telekinesis, someone go away, but no. Rubik came in, and then Slardar came in, and then the big old. Oh, actually, I think Trixie came in third, but whatever the case, the RP was the deciding factor, and so yeah. really well played by Trixie to come in. And I'm glad that he leveled RP because these days a lot of Magnuses who just sit in the offlane don't take it too early. They might even wait until like 10 and 11, but you see the power of RP even at just level six without a blink dagger. It's kind of interesting, too, that I happen to just be talking about the items of Animage as it's being jumped right there. Because, honestly, if he was going more the quote-unquote uh, traditional or, you know, the rushing the battle fury, he probably would have died right there. Because i got to say yeah. the helm, if anything, or the headdress actually kept him alive with that minor region it provides and uh, even a couple of stats on top of that. So 
Yeah, I definitely agree with it. And you can, like I said, he wants to be left alone. You don't go so regen heavy, so sustain heavy, unless if you're planning on not ever wanting to go back to the fountain and not ever wanting to have to like link up with your team. And so not only does he survive that gank, he participates, gets that last hit onto the Ember Spirit, which is a big boost for him. This anti-mage is level 10 right now. Oh, they're going so middle lane, by Era's the way. Pounce will miss right there. Mickey hands the LS in with a crush and down goes Ember Spirit. And now Madara completely regretting this decision right here so Spartan they try to make a play that was clearly bait all the the, the, the time right there a good job Whoa. relocating back out oh, though okay. as yeah that was the back end of it so yeah, nice timing and they do get out safely but yeah again Ember Spirit he was playing very aggressive in the face of Lena clearly an IO port was coming in and it just backfired again though that's, uh, that's obviously what happened at the bottom lane now in the middle lane there these these IO ganks aren't necessarily working as planned for mouse sports unfortunately no, the NIP team, the NIP draft is very well equipped to turn around these relocates because, I mean, even once Magus completes the Blink Dagger, which he's still a ways away, he went for the Arcane Boots first and, you know, he's going to be farming up the jungle a little bit, but once he completes that Blink Dagger, then your relocate ganks almost become a liability because you're basically telegraphing, hey, two of my heroes are going to be here and a third one's probably coming, if not already there, so... Magnus immediately has like a big red light going off in his head. It's like that is the place to be. And same thing with Slarder. He's also a little bit away from his Blink Dagger, but these are very, very important counter initiation tools that are going to be a problem. Yeah. Bane, how's he been doing? He is level six now, so of course he has that Fiend's Grip, and we'll see if that comes into play. But again, yeah, you know, one of the bigger downsides of that ability, as strong as it potentially is, that the channel is unfortunate as far as having to do that. Now, bottom lane, crush on a Darks, you're open right here. A surge is pop at the lift in the air. He steals the surge himself, and uh, that will be a dead Darks here. The mana void even committed to guarantee it. So good execution again from NIP. They. They seem like a pretty fluid team, and i got to say I've cast them a couple of times over these last couple of days, and this is definitely the best that they've, they've looked so far as these days have been moving on. So you know, good news for NIP fans, but Mouse Sports, they're, they're in a hole, unfortunately, down 9-2, to two, but overall net worth, it's only a 2,200 net worth lead, so nothing to get too uh, worked up about here. True, but you have to keep in mind that Mouse Sports have like an inherently more early game oriented team. Like... Anti-Mage being this far ahead, Slark has been, oh, there's a Fiend's Grip, relocate. Okay, I'm gonna use that right here, Anti-Mage, again, this time where they will actually get the kill. So I guess third time's a charm in the sense of relocating for the gank. And that should be the uh, end of fighting down here. Yeah, they're just gonna push the tower now. Yeah, that worked out well. Uh, definitely good position by maybe next time because Fiend's Grip range isn't exceptional. At nighttime, it works out a little bit better, and they were taking advantage of that. He was hiding in that route that you take to go to the side shop and was able to just pluck Anti-Mage mid-farm. But you, you're going to need to take these opportunities as they come, and you're going to need to like capture them because not only are they behind, but like I said, Bane does not have the most farm. He's not going to have anything like an Aether Lens or a Blink Dagger or a Glimmer Cape or any of those traditional setup items for Bane Fiend's Grip onto Anti-Mages. So that's that was a good pick, but Anti-Mage is going to be more well protected moving forward. Another pause coming out here for Mouse Sports. So clearly, again, a little bit of frustration as uh, something's going on with their internet here as NIP's made it clear that they're not really feeling it. So trying to get that figured out. Hopefully for their sake and really everyone's getting even the spectator side. You just kind of hope that that's cleaned up and get a clean game here as a result. So once again, it will resume now. We're going to go back in. Slark does have that shadow amulet as mentioned and getting that shadow blade coming up ASAP. Ember Spirit is going to be going that that Veil of Discord build. So um, again, this is definitely one of these things where we've seen kind of a back and forth on in terms of whether or not they get it. But is this is this perhaps because of uh, the activity this game? I mean, they really do seem to be go, go, go here, you know, with that. Yeah, dark they're not going to win late. And so even though Magic Amber isn't ideal, unless they get this kill on Rubik. Yep. Uh, the and no TP, so easy kill. The problem is Magic, dam magic Damage Amber is going to fall off substantially because Anti-Mage has Spell Shield, Rubik has Null Field, and so that is a lot of survivability against this Magic Damage oriented build. But the thing is that if you go right-click build, you don't deal damage, you don't get kills until like 30, 35 minutes into the game as opposed to 20, 25 minutes into the game. And so 
y by that time, anti mage will be outpacing you heavily. So you picked an aisle, you picked a ban, you want to get things done early. Even if it's not going to scale late, you don't think about late. You think about, we're going to end this game before 40 minutes. Well, Phil has been purchased now, so on the way to doing that again, the Shadowblade of Slark also going to entice that uh, activity here of Mouse Sports, who, who traditionally they do kind of feel like a team that is a go, go, go team of sorts. You know, they, they like to fight constantly and uh, looking to do that yet again right here. How about, speaking of that, the Alina, so not only does he get the Yules, but he actually does have that Shadowblade queued up. You're talking about that in the, in the Chinese region, at least. Perhaps that's uh, one of the more popular pickups on these Linas and Mickey maybe watching some uh, Chinese Dota here. Picking up on yeah, that. it's going to provide good initiation because right now NIP, I mean, they have solid initiation once these Blink Daggers come up and running, but then you kind of need the damage to follow up. And if Lina is kind of lagging behind, which typically a Yule's is substantial enough, and I don't really know if there's anything really that critical that a Shadow Blade allows Mickey to do, but it's just a good scaling item on Alina, and apparently he doesn't favor too much the Bloodstone early. It may be a build thing, or it may be just a player style. Either item would have been fine after the Yule's, but I always prefer seeing the Shadow Blade because it's just a more flashy item. Oh, Courier's coming in. Mickey's scouting this, though. He, this is an Invisorin, actually. They're going to jump on a Skylark, I'm guessing. Yeah, the Yule's opening. Get the LSA to land right after. The combo, Laguna Blade, everything used. Let's get the kill nice. and the RP to pull in the Amber. I was wondering if that was going to hit. And it ended up doing so. That radius was absolutely nice huge. Spartan. They're going to get Spartan as well as he relocated in, trying to save, if anything. Triple kill as a result in favor of Era, actually, on the Anti-Mage. So, oof, NIP, that's a huge take for them. Look at this Madara here. <laughs> Scouting. Yeah, he's kind of lost without a home here. Wants to get a pick off, but Rubik was really the only hero that he could successfully pick off, and Insania was long gone. It's ballsy for Trixie to go in on that RP because I don't really know, like, I, <laughs> any split second later, and it's possible that Ember may have actually been mid slight and would have just dodged it. Mm -hmm. And that was the Blink Dagger reveal of Trixie. And he had all the information that was in his room from Lena was scouting out everything, but. He went for it, and it definitely profited them a big time. And yeah, that's a great way to show off your first Blink Dagger, as now Slardar has completed the sec second Blink Dagger on NIP. Exactly. Just about to bring that up, too. It's like you got one now out of the way. All right, now we know Magnus has it. Do they know Slardar has it, though? He hasn't shown it yet, and just getting it right here. So look at what's going on in middle lane. Again, RP is down, of course. They know this, but still not very confident, especially with the Slardar now able to initiate that blink is mentioned. So there we go. There's a blink in from Slaughter. The jump on Amber Spear. The burst is real. And he goes down the vacuum wall combination at the tower, though. So this is still Ooh. a bad fight for Mouse Sports and a huge successful fight on the other side for NIP as a double kill for Era and that Mana Void. Yeah, the, the combo was definitely real there. Between this the entire game, NIP is just like one step ahead of Mouse Sports because Mouse Sports are doing all the right plays, but NIP just like they have the right positioning, they have the right map awareness, they have the right warding, and in this case, they have the right items. They would not have played nearly as aggressively as top lane. Honey's going to go down, but let's see if Anti Mage feels confident completing. Yeah, he's really. Era has nothing to be concerned about right now. Nah, he's. Got a Vlad's here, so bulking up a little bit, open that far potential even more with a Battle Fury, and let's go more of the traditional route of the Yasha into the Manta style here. Homie's got a solid 2k net worth advantage on top of the Slark. It's not often that you'll see an anti mage outpacing a Slark this heavily at 19 minutes in, but yeah, yeah Era's 7 1 and 2 right now. It's, it's, uh, he's a ticking time bomb. Yeah, and as you pointed out earlier, Mouse Sports, especially with the commitment of the Veil earlier on, I mean, they are really looking to to have the early victory and kind of win that way. But, man, they're down 15 to 5 hero kills, 5,200 net worth in favor of NIP. So that game plan is not really playing out so far as planned, although they have been trying constantly. But that's the thing, though. It's If you kind of commit to that strategy and it's not working, then you're just going to fall that much further behind. And then all of a sudden your recovery chances becomes – Pretty dire, really. In the dire side yeah, after all. Even their high ground defense is pretty miserable, to say the least. Io can't really burn out creep waves. In fact, I was terrible at it. Bane can only take out one creep at most. You can put an ion shell, but that's like a long, long term thing, and you can't really take it outside of your high ground. You have to do it once the creeps approach the high ground. And then, same thing with Ember and Slark, it's kind of suboptimal. Bane? Oh. 
You're on top lane, him. Madara has to run. They get the tower kill at least. Oh no, it was denied actually, so we'll play by error right there. And they're going to catch IO. Nothing that Madara can do. Meanwhile, at the bottom lane, Bane does go down and Yules to throw up Skylark in the air, but they're just trying to run now. Mickey can get out. Yes, he can. The vacuum's late. And Sandy is like, don't find me. Don't find me. Don't find me. They're going to find me. <laughs> yes. No. Oh, oh, they pinged it. Oh my god. He's hiding there. Hello, I did man. not know that, that was a juke spot. Apparently That's sick. It, is. It, may, it may just be working because I think it's working because it's nighttime. Yeah. It just turned night, and otherwise the crews would have spotted him for sure. But yeah, he gets out, and they get two successful kills. I bet Lena's almost Dias wishing that she did have a bloodstone with the amount of kills that Mickey has participated in. Yeah, obviously in hindsight, that would have been nice to have. But to be fair, the Yules has been setting up pretty nicely, so there's that idea too. Um, oh, Dara is going back in, but again, you gotta be careful of this. Oh, RP's ready, man. Magnus is like, do I go? Do I go? <laughs> I wanted to. Give me the word, boys. Yeah. Give me the cue. There's Give me gonna the be the word. chance. He only gets one, though. And the Dark Pack popped right after, so he gets out looking to play on Majara. He's taking some good chunk of damage. However, Lena will end up falling. And this is the first time in a long time that Mouse seems like they're on top of a fight, actually. They're gonna get the second in. The Magnus right there, yeah, that was oh not God, a pretty RP. Hani will end up falling, actually, and it's Sandy goes down, too. The Soul Survivor's era, who's, oh, by the way, at the top lane as he's slept currently, but he'll be fine, though, in the end. But, yeah, finally a successful fight for Malison. That's got to feel so good for them. The middle tower you can't push. really get away with these single hero RPs now. I mean, he almost had the two hero RP. If he had managed to get Thug also, that would have guaranteed been a one fight for an IP, but... He got a little bit too overzealous. He saw the opportunity on Slark. Possibly he was fearing for... Oh, Hera? Might? Uh, He's good. The, yeah. The problem is you need the Bane to set up on Hera. Like, you'll have the Ember chains, but it's not going to be enough. You need Fiend's Grip. Otherwise, anti mage can just get out of everything. Especially once he gets his Manta style, too. Yeah. Oh, luck. yeah. Then you definitely have nothing. Uh, but yeah, about the last, not only was it a single, but again, the dark pack was active, so he literally got out of it a half a second later. Exactly. So it didn't even matter at that point. However, Madara, again, having to pounce away defensively right here, has that Echo Saber, of course, as we see. Going to be going the Silver Edge next, it looks like. Doing perhaps amp damage against the likes of that anti-mage, take away that uh, passive, the spell shield here. Yeah, they got a lot. You know, that between uh, the, him and, and Rubik, obviously, only level one no field right now. But once that's maxed out, I mean, this anti-mage will be taking much magic damage. But bottom lane, they do find Skylark and Laguna Blake committed for the kill right there. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Eric goes for an Aghanim Scepter after completing this butterfly. Because then there's, there's literally nothing they can do. Because he can purge off the Searing Chains with the... Uh, Manta style, and then once he has Aghanim Scepter, then like literally both of Bane's spells will stop him from doing anything. You can get the Nightmare off and then immediately purge it off of yourself as a Bane, but like by the time you do that, Anti Mage has already blinked like 5,000 miles away. So, yeah, he is very, very confident this game, as you can see by him going straight into this tier one tower. Yeah, he's level 18, by the way. He got that minus one second blink cooldown, so that's what now four second cooldown here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's surprising. Very rarely do I see that. Most of the time, it's always the attack speed. Especially if you're the only carry. Nice the mobility here maybe in this case. It's going to be slept, but Hani going in on it maybe next time. Will be counter, though. The brain stab comes out. Meanwhile, we see Magnus use the RP. Cut, brings him in with a skewer, and they just both melt the IO and the oh, man, Bane right there. The Laguna Blade actually takes out the Sark as well. And yeah, you mentioned he stole the Fiend Script, actually, so using that to help lock down, guarantee some kills. Down goes Amber Spirit, Dark Seer, the sole survivor this time around on Mouse Sports, but a very clean fight for NIP, and they're going to keep this push going now. Antimage, that man style in full, being finished. They got really lucky. Mikkei got a uh, follow-up, or rather, Trixie was able to get two heroes with the Skewer. He only was able to successfully RP the IO, but while kebabbing two heroes, brought them into a Mikkei LSA, and if Mikkei didn't connect that LSA, again, we would have seen a repeat of that mid lane fight, but with that LSA locking down the Slark long enough, and then Rubik stealing the Fiend Script, which there's literally nothing Banes can do about that, unless you get like a Lincoln's or the Glimmer Cape, or the Aether Lens, like I said, True. to maybe be out of range, but this is a very, very poor Bane, and he's working on the Glimmer Cape, but it's a long ways away, and a lot of damage has already been done since Dark Seer was basically out of commission for that fight during the Rubik stolen Fiend's Grip. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a that's a really good point, and that's such an easy ability to steal as you mentioned. Now, uh, wow, <laughs> anti mage gone. Yeah, that was uh, close, but not really because again, as he has that Manta style, as we mentioned earlier, it's just that's such a good getaway tool, especially against this crowd control of Mouse Sports or lack thereof, really now. 
already was lacking. So, yeah, this anti-mage is going to be so difficult. That on top of the minus one second blink cooldown, as we were just talking about before that fight. So this is a very mobile, very slippery anti-mage, as he tends to be. And now he's going to have a basher next in line. So his, his aggressive powers, his offensive powers even, are going to be also pretty scary. That with the empower buff to top it all off from the Magnus here. Yeah, he demolishes targets in no time at all. They may think about doing Roche soon. Trixie has RP in about five seconds, and the the team fight potential of Mouse Sports is still intimidating. You always have to be concerned about Blink Vacuum oh, and uh, relocate follow up, or not Blink Vacuum, as Skylar did not go for Blink Dagger. He's actually going pure survivability, which I can understand, but yeah, the team fight is still intimidating for Mouse, assuming they get the good initiation that they want, but. Trixie is making that increasingly difficult. Again, like we're only seeing one hero RPs, and yet NIP is still confidently winning these fights. Oh, he has an RP again, and look at this flank here. They're smoked up. He's going to get a couple. He gets both the Bane and the Ember Spirit. And Bally's Bane's going to die. Thug will get a return slide of Fist and the Vacuum on top of that. But now Ember Spirit is being locked up by the Fiend's Group, I believe. That Rubik stole, but Rubik will go down. He's a little bit too close to that fight. And they also lose the Magnus. And right now, Slaughter, he's kind of left alone in the midst of it as well. He too will go down. Era has to make his way out of there. Lena was not there. That's so key. Obviously, that's so much damage they're missing out on if he's not there. So, nice turn for Mouse Sports. A three for nothing despite a decent RP opening. Yeah, they could have taken those two kills and gotten out, but nope. Madara. And yeah, one more. Era. Pops a Shadow Dance at least and not get him to blink away. Not risk it. Oh, they're it. going in. Relocate. Wow, they really are. They're going to catch Mickey, actually. Pops that new Shadow Blade of his. Oh, oh anything? Yes, they have the AoE. <laughs> And he will eventually go down. So he's dead for 20 seconds. He chose to get that minus respawn time talent at least. So he's going to be up pretty quickly here. Radiant structures are fortified. This might know Bloodstone. Yeah, Mouse Words, they, it was, uh, I don't really know if that Bane buyback was necessary, but it was a good idea for them to actually take the fight. Usually after you just blow two heroes like that, you're like, oh, God, we need to panic and run. But they stick around. Trixie is going to get Fiend's Gripped. And you try to skewer somebody stolen. in. But now, actually, Sark is in trouble. Yeah, he mentioned the Fiend's Gripped again. Stolen, though. And there goes a the kill. On to Slark, however, Fiend's Grip's still on a cooldown for the Rubik, but it doesn't matter in this case. Isles picked off, and Mouseport's definitely overstaying their welcome. Down goes the Bane as well. Nice Bash Brock coming out from Aero, and they're going to chase us still. Ember Spirit has that remnant. Nice Searing Chains, and he's going to go <laughs> zip zap around. He's seen, he's though. Still still needs to run. He has no remnants. Mike has Shadow Blade in five seconds. Blink. Oh, they're going to keep going. Slaughter. Yeah, it's wait for us. Oh, he will catch it just on the outskirts. And that should be a dead ember now. Skewer forward and down he goes. A great pursuit from NIP. Just when it seems like Mouse, you know, they finally win in like a decent fight. Just like before, NIP comes back in the next one, though, and comes back even stronger, it feels like. Anti-Mage is too large. He is like 6k net worth on top of the Slark. And if you had killed the Anti-Mage, then you would have been able to get a lot of work done. But if AM is up, then that means that he doesn't have to wait for his extremely long respawn because he's level 21 right now. If they had managed to pick him off, then there's no way NIP would have felt confident for that retaliation near their mid-tier 2. But Trixie was like, whatever, let's go for it. Mrs. Skewer, get Fiend's Grip, doesn't matter. Our anti-mage is devastatingly large, now has uh, Aegis on top of that. You can take a good portion of fights, and NIP are a solid 11k net worth up in general. So, yeah, one lost fight here and there. It's not that dramatic, but their high ground siege is where it's going to have to really show how strong they are. Ooh, top lane. Remember, he has a oh, fiend grip on Rubik. Grip. There we go. He's going to use it right here, locking down the Slark Slark immobile as a result. However, the relocate out, well played by the IO. He was ready to go. So, yeah, the follow up damage just wasn't enough. IO's going to be ported back, though, and that could get interesting. He will have a leash to yeah, use. waiting. Unless they tried to time it. <laughs> they still get him, though, with the lift, and Laguna Blake committed for the kill. So Io will be out for the next 45 seconds right here. Yules on the Ember, keeping Animage alive. And he does have the Aegis, but they don't want to waste it here if they don't have to. And they're going to retreat now. So, yeah, why not just regroup, kind of rebuild your life pool on the Animage especially, and look to go back in with that Aegis once again. Yeah, plus Insania almost has a Blink Dagger completed on this Rubik, and... It was a good Fiend's Grip setup, but the problem is they didn't have, like, ideally Trixie would have been in position to just skewer some of that Slark back and then drag him way out of tether relocate range. But, yeah, Io was patiently waiting. Spartan gives up his life, but almost certainly worth it to save that Slark. Yeah, that net worth lead, it was impressive earlier on for the Anti-Mage. It's just even that much more, perhaps more expected, though, as the game picks up, of course, 20,000 net worth. Um, 
overall for him. Obviously, that's really around a 7,000 lead over the next one in line, being that Slark here on the other side. So, yeah, very impressive lead. As I mentioned, Antimage feels like it's getting to a point where he's almost just too big. 10 to all stats now. Doesn't even go the evasion. Doesn't need it here. Just giving those brutal stats. Brute stats yeah, even. You even need bounty runes. He's like, you want, you want this, <laughs> Rubik? You want, you you want a little complete your little blink dagger? I'll let you do it. All right. I'll grace you with my... my yeah, uh, what's that word that kings use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anti mage. I'm also curious when he gets to level 25. By curious, I mean I'm sure it's going to be 25 agility, but I mean, minus 50 second cooldown. That makes it a 20 second cooldown mana void. That seems like that could potentially be pretty fun. But and maybe if against like a storm spirit, that yeah. that's like the trap that so many terrorblades fall into with their sunder thing. Like by the time you're 25, how many times are you really going to be able to use your ult in a team fight? Every single time I see sunder cooldown taken at 25 by Terra Blades. It's almost certainly I see them get chain stunned to infinity and don't even sunder once, let alone twice. Like so, yeah, I I mean, then again, Era is so far ahead that, I mean, hell, you could go for the Mana Void cooldown and just, like, siege with your illusions as Mike actually dies to Slark in the mid lane with a relocate gank set up with Thug. Yeah, that happened pretty quickly. Ember Spear just went right in and then the relocate right on top. So good execution from Sports there. And but Lena's already back up again. She does have the Bloodstone now, so that's kind of unfortunate how that was used right away. <laughs> or now down to eight charges, but he resurrects very quickly now with the Talon. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Anti-Mage locked in initially, but he's able to blink out despite the wall. The vacuum comes out, hits Insania, but only Insania, and he will fall, but really not the most casualties again for NIP. They should be retreating, though, unless they're kind of setting up for a return find here. RP is ready for Magnus. Mm. I mean, Lena's up, but... I still don't know about this. God, they're really spread out, man. Oh, they want to go in, though. Mickey, they do catch somebody. They catch the Bane in the back lines. So now it's a even fight at four versus four. Yeah, yeah support on either side. Aegis still. Honey catches Darkseer. Meanwhile, Darkseer, the man of void, not enough for the kill initially. He's looking for the chase. We're going to play the RP. We'll secure it in the Amadara, though. Now does a good damage back on Era. Era just about dead, but he's not going to fall, however. The Shadow Dance not going to save Slark for the time being. Those auto attacks are right clicks from Mickey. Doing way too much, and he goes down to the end. So obviously, the Aegis is popping out. Thug, he needs to run. He can't really run successfully, though. The Yules throws him in the air. Got a remnant for him, but they were ready for that. The Slark crush on top. The Crows of Haze, and down goes Amber Spirit. Their cores are dead for a good minute plus here. This is easily at least one set of racks. Yeah, they actually are going for mid. Problem is, backdoor protection is still up and running, and <laughs> mid creep wave is long ways away. Bot creep wave was slowly getting pushed out by, I believe, Wall of Replica Illusions, and so. They have to buy back Io. Uh-oh. I mean, what is Io doing? You are dead, Spartan. Oh, okay. Just distracting, I guess. He's trying to keep As the lane pushed. I mean, it seems like that's yeah. what they were doing right there. Yeah, just trying to keep the lane pushed, if anything, distract. But they're just going to call it GG, actually. All right. That's a... Uh, I mean, yeah, anime just getting way pretty far. It, was, there, but... it was pretty over. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a pub GG, but... You know, I mean, NIP just came out of like a 70 minute match. Maybe they want to show respect and be like, all right, all right, you guys beat us. It was a solid 33 minutes. We uh, we tried some 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 kind of draft. I, I, I still don't know where the Bane was, yeah. you know, like Pulled what off. the mentality was for picking the Bane, but it didn't work. And NIP take a pretty decisive game one. If anything, it almost hurt because of the Rubik on the other side. The easy mention. Exactly. It's such a you can't really hide that ability because you're channeling it. So Rubik several times in that game still used it for themselves and it just hurt. So yeah, the draft overall, we said it from the beginning, it just it felt just stronger for NIP and it, they showed it, they played it well and I also got to say, I mean, the NIP has to feel so good about that because not only in the previous series, you know, it was in that, that grueling game there, but again, over these last two or three days between different qualifiers, they have not won a game. They've been 0-6, I want to say, between Zodak, this one, and the Mr. Cat Invitational. So um, it's got to feel good to finally get a win in a game under their belt here after not winning, going on a little bit of a losing streak. But again, the series is not over yet. They're just up one nothing in this best of three now, so we'll see how Mouse Sports responds. Here in game number two. But again, I'm Bricky CBK, guys, joined by Tsunami here, tuning into the Summit 7 European coverage. Stay tuned.